So fast forward, um, and you know, I have never really shared this, but I had a conversation with Nipsey, Nipsey Hussle before he passed, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe like not even a year before he passed. And he he had called and he was he was in fact it was a little more than that because he had just solidify his deal with um Atlantic. Okay. Uh, and he was and, and he would he he hit me on the ground, right? And, and was like, you know, I'm trying to get in touch with you, whatever. I'm like, oh nip. You know what I mean? Boom. So wow. we had, I had met him before and, and you know what I mean through a mutual friend, my my my, my buddy Zaid Malik. But anyway, um he was like, I want to get in touch. So I hit him up and we got on the jack, right? And we had this like hour long conversation about um, what he had been trying to do up to that point, with, you know, on, as an independent and how he wanted his, his situation to be with Atlantic and, um, and that he had made it to the certain personal goals he had. So right. he was a partner, right? So, <clears throat> um, and so what he wanted to talk to me about, though, was his three album mission, which was to do Victory Lap, he was going to do another album, and then he, his final one that he would owe Atlantic would be this final album called A Spook Who Sat By The Door, right? Mm. And he told me that. Wow. He, wanted, he told me he wanted to redo Let's Get Free oh. and wanted, wanted, you know, our permission, right? Wow. To, to, to sample and to really, like, redo it for and what he called his generation. And, and I didn't, all the admiration he had for that record and it, he, we just had a heart to heart back and forth, and obviously that we didn't we didn't get to go there. Yeah. Um, but that's I just wanted to speak to the type of heart Nip had, 